Good morning and welcome to day three. So today is a very dull and cloudy day. Um, very low cloud base, lots of mist around. Um, it's not as cold today, it's only minus five at the moment, so feeling a little bit warmer than it was yesterday. Um, today's idea is to, or should I say agenda, is to find the crested tit. Now, there are places you can go, you can go pay um, certain um, people to go to, to, to areas um, for about £80 to £130 for the day, depending on whether you want a half day or a full day. And that's an area where you're guaranteed to see uh, the crested tits. Um, but today we're out in the wild looking for the wild crested tit completely, um, just doing our own research and going about it. And whether we're lucky or not, who knows. Um, but we've got three areas that we're going to try today. And then tomorrow, hopefully, go and find some black grouse. I know yesterday um, I said that we saw a black grouse in the morning. Um, once we got back to the accommodation, looked at the images, we realised it was a red grouse in its winter plumage, which just made it look very black uh, at the distance that it was from us. Um, so that's a bit disappointing, but never mind. It was lovely to see and photograph all the same. So, yeah, today, crested tits, maybe the odd red squirrel, who knows what we're going to get. Um, but yeah, we've got eight hours of daylight and we're going to use every second of it. So follow me today as we photograph the crested tit. fantastic morning it's been so far this morning um, been out now for about two hours it's actually starting to brighten up a little bit um, but I've walked about half a mile down this uh, woodland path here and heard the crested tits before I even saw them um, and they are they're, they're quite high up in the trees today um, I was under the impression that the crested tits were, were quite low down um, during winter and then as it as the temperature rose they sort of went higher up into the trees maybe I got that wrong so far not got any decent pictures got a nice little bit of uh, slow motion video which was nice um, completely by mistake I had I had I thought it I thought I had my setting on uh, normal 24 frames per second um, but no nice little bit of video footage so I'm gonna start making my way back and just see if we get any more crested tits So you may uh, see some videos on YouTube that um, you see people carrying around feeders and all the crested tits come down onto these feeders. Um, I just want 
you to know that that is not sort of the case when you're out here <coughs> when you're out here in the wild um, those sort of when you see those videos those sort of paid experiences so somebody has an area where the crested tits are and you pay to go to these places and the crested tits come and, and, and other birds come and land on the uh, the mobile feeder um, but yeah if you're coming out just doing wildlife photography um, <laughs> that's not going to happen you got to look for your wildlife be very quiet while you're doing it but it's rewarding just seeing them just seeing them um, yeah perfect Anyway, let's crack on. Well, unfortunately we've been quite unlucky today with the crested tits. Had a brief moment with them this morning and that's been about it. Um, went off down to Glenmore Lodge, down to the area down there. Had a look, um, nothing down there either. So we've come back up to this area up here and um, no reporting sightings yesterday. Um, nothing here up near the, uh, the center today. Um, however, there are plenty of other birds. We've got the coal tits, great tits, finches, and the great spotted woodpecker's been in a few times as well. So it's been nice just sitting here taking some photos of these little guys and, you know, taking nuts off the end of the lens. And uh, there are actually some voles, um, but we've not been able to, well, I've not been able to photograph any of them yet. And we're quickly running out of daylight as well. So it's going to be uh, a no-show, I think, for the custard tits today. Still two days to go. Um, no idea what's happening over the next couple of days. Um, the weather's not too good again tomorrow. Friday is our last day. Um, so it's supposed to clear up a bit on Friday. Yeah, we got uh, got a bit of a tip that there may be some capacelli somewhere, so we're going to have a look at that tonight. Um, see where that location is, and maybe give that a uh, a quick whirl in the morning and see if we we get lucky. Morning everyone and welcome to day four. So today I'm back out looking for the crested tit. I'm putting a full day into it today. Yesterday I did manage to capture the, the crested tit and do a bit of video, um, but it was very, very um, short and the crested tits were quite high up in the tree. So today I'm looking um, to get some better pictures um, and I'm hoping that the, the light will improve as the day goes on. But it's such a fabulous morning. It's it's quite overcast, it's quite misty, but it's very atmospheric. I mean, just look at this scene here behind me. Absolutely wonderful. So, fingers crossed, I'll get to see the crested tip today. Tomorrow is my last day here. So uh, the weather's set to improve, it's set to get very, very cold again, and blue skies, touch wood. So tomorrow we'll be back up onto the mountains uh, looking for the ptarmigan and the mountain hares. Because uh, on Tuesday when I went up into the mountains, I was only up there for a couple of hours. 
Uh, so tomorrow I'm putting in a full six hours on the mountainside. But for today, I need to get uh, walking around and listening out for the crested tit. You tend to hear them before you see them. At the moment, I can't hear anything. So perhaps I need to move. So I'm going to pack the camera up and have a walk round the edge of this lock here. So I've got three mountain hares just here on the hill behind me. One over here, one up there, and one a bit further over. Absolutely fantastic. Um, this is where I was on Tuesday, uh, where I saw the two hares. Um, absolutely amazing. Came back to the same spot, and lo and behold, I think there's four. There's I think one on the other side that I got earlier, which isn't as white as these three here. But no, absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't believe it. It's just, and and they are quite easy to spot. Unfortunately, we had a big thaw last night, so a lot of the uh, a lot of the surface snow has disappeared, and all the hoar frost as well that was on the heather that's all gone. Um, but I'm sure that'll come back tonight. As we're uh, forecast a big freeze tonight, down to minus 12 up on the tops. So yeah. Hopefully these hairs will get bedded in for the night and not move now and, and warm up that bit of ground that they're sat on. Um, anyway, let's get some photos and have some video. This hair has obviously been photographed many times before because, no word of a lie, eight metres away, five, unbelievable. This is just incredible. Just being this close to the, to the barn hair and with them not being afraid and running off. audio because I'm whispering. <laughs> okay what I'm going to do is if I can just move around the hair and just get some different angles. Um, my approach at the moment is not to make eye contact with the hair 
and to try and stay on my bum as I just move across just keeping it in the corner of my eye as I'm moving very slowly and then just raising the camera back up in a very slow and non-threatening manner and it seems absolutely fine with that if I feel at all that it gets a bit uncomfortable I'll, I'll just back off Just moved round now, and I'm facing the hair more or less head on. Um, and he seems quite happy. And the reason that I know it seems quite comfortable with me being here is that he's just sat up and done a bit of cleaning. Um, had a bit of a scratch, had a sniff at me in the air, and then just had a bit of a clean. Um, and settle back down where he is. Um, really didn't seem too bothered that I was here. Um, saw me, uh, obviously sees me as no threat whatsoever. Um, but yeah, check out this video of him cleaning himself. Fantastic. I'm not sure if that was a grouse that flew over the top of me then. Or an eagle thinking I was something to eat. Oh no, it's engines. It must be uh, deer stalkers going up the track on the other side of the mountain. Um, that's where we saw the massive herd of deer on Tuesday. Um, and we have seen a load of Land Rovers parked up with a dead box on the back. So they've obviously been out deer stalking today. Oh yeah, I can see them coming down the mountain. With his dogs in tow. Let's see if I can get some on this, uh, this camera. Well, I'm pleased to say that there is uh, no deer on the back of his uh, mobile, so no deer today. But no, I'm going to leave these three hairs in peace now and head back to the car. And I know what you're thinking. I did say I wasn't leaving the, gr the crested tits today, but after four hours of absolutely nothing and a two mile walk round, <laughs> I've given up, but I still got the tit. I got a little bit of video, so I'm chuffed with that. Nothing better than catching it out in the wild. And uh, I was obviously just very fortunate to get what I did. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to the car guys and I will see you in the morning, hopefully in the mountains on the snow line, if it hasn't all gone. So until tomorrow, Take care.
Well, good morning everyone. This is the final day. Um, it is half past seven in the morning and clear skies, stars in the sky. It is currently, let's have a look at the temperature down here, minus 6.5. So that's not too bad. So we're just going to get geared up and head out onto the mountains. So yeah, join me today for a hopefully hair and ptarmigan wildlife photography trip so i will see you on the hill good morning and sync the audio good morning what a fantastic morning it is this morning look at this absolutely fantastic um so yeah so i'm gonna be heading up onto this ridge here this morning um can't wait for today even if i'm just out on the mountains it's, it's just fantastic to be out um i'm not going to get any sun till probably about 11 o'clock till it comes over the tops of these peaks um but no absolutely fantastic i'm still getting to grips with using a gopro um if i turn the camera around the other way you'll see uh, all the mist in the valley How amazing is that so anyway i'm gonna make my way up a uh, long way to go a long day but it's gonna be fun so join me as we head up the mountain time to put the old crampons on These are just a pair of normal crampons, just walking crampons. Go on, you might maybe think. Things are getting onto steeper slopes. I don't want to slide down and have to walk all the way back up. There we go, job's a good one. And I can push on. So, I'm hoping that's cold wind. Um, we're going to see some ptarmigan plant hairs pretty soon. There's fresh prints here in the snow behind me um, and some droppings as well. Uh, you see all these fresh prints in the snow and you can tell they're fresh because I had to say there's obviously been very, very slight snow pool tonight because the top's a little soft. I could just tap my finger on it. It goes in and these sort of crumple very easily. They haven't frozen, the prints haven't frozen. Let's just get up there and see what we can find. Okay, well, I've been walking across the front of this mountain for the last hour or so and seen lots of tracks of the ptarmigan and the hares but not a single site yet so what i might do is i might do a bit of videoing of the uh this view here that i've got it's absolutely fantastic but uh what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to put a nd filter on now kf concept sent me these filters um i've used them a couple of times especially the the, the grad filter um and the nd8 filter when i was photographing the birds in the sky it's really handy just to pop one of those on what i have is i've got my filter on here so these little filters here this really snap on and i can start taking the shots dead easy when i want to take it off i'll just simply take that off and what i've done is i've put some magnets here on my tripod under a bit of camouflage wrap so when i finish with it i can simply put my filter underneath here carry on photographing and, and videoing and then i can grab the filter pop it on and i can go straight into video mode from photo mode um, because i'll need that three extra tops of light cutting out so it don't blow out the highlights which means that i can keep my aperture down 
and have some lovely, lovely photographs. I mean, this view here is absolutely stunning. I'm just going to do a sl slow panorama now with the filter on of this view here. Perfect. So even though I'm finished videoing and I've got my lens cap on, I can simply just put my finger in there, take the filter out, clip it onto a magnet and carry on photographing. So yeah, so thanks KF Concept for sending those filters. They have certainly been handy and they're so versatile and easy to use. Quick and easy is what you want uh, with wildlife photography because things can change in an instant. Um, I'm photographing the subject, thinking, oh, I need to grab some video, ND on the front, and I'm set, perfect. But anyway, let's carry on looking for this, uh, these hares and ptarmigans, shall we? Two ptarmigans up here. Just hoping that um, they might go up onto a rock. Um, it's just by a piece of heather at the moment. I'm just hoping it goes in front of the heather because then I'll have better contrast of the tower going against the heather. There's two of them together. Absolutely fantastic to see. completely fine that I'm, I'm here. Um, they were a bit nervous when I first arrived, but I've just sat here a bit quiet and they're now just foraging on the ground. So I'm just going to wait um, and see, see if I get that that one shot. Oh, so, um, that was just jumping up onto a rock. And you never know, a hare might run past. But uh, no, it's fantastic. It's a bit chilly. We've just had some um, fighter jets fly over. Absolutely, really, really low. I didn't get them on the camera because I'm not changing all the settings just to take a picture of that, but it, uh, it spooked the ptarmigan, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to jump in here quickly and just let you know that I've now got uh, several workshops running this year. So if you fancy coming out with me, uh, photographing the hares, the puffins, the otters on the Isle of Mull, the seabirds on the cliffs at Bempton, um, just nip across the website. There's uh, plenty of uh, workshops there for you to now have a look over. If you're interested, complete the form and we'll then get you booked in and get you out into the field photographing some fabulous wildlife and also picking up on some hints and tips on photography and how to photograph wildlife etc so yeah so 
don't forget the links in the description and I look forward to meeting a few of you on the workshops. Okay guys, well this is a wrap here on my five day trip to the Cairngorms. It has been absolutely fantastic. More than happy with the images and videos that I've managed to get. Very fortunate to see the crested tit and get a little bit of video. Today, I've been out to photograph the ptarmigan and look for the hares. Fortunately, we had no hares today. Um, plenty of prints absolutely everywhere. Um, as far as the ptarmigans go, well, they were absolutely everywhere today. Um, yeah, just male and females in pairs all along the hillside, absolutely fantastic. Couldn't have asked for anything more, really. Um, so yeah, fantastic day. Thanks to KF Concept for sponsoring this video. Um, I'm going to put a link to their filter set, their magnetic filters that I've been using in the description below. So feel free to have a look at those filters. Absolutely worth every penny. Um, really easy to use and I'm sure I'm going to be getting a lot of use out of them in summer. But for now, thanks for watching guys. Take care and I'll see you on the next adventure.